O oh God, come to my assistance. O oh Lord, make haste and help me. You are my rescuer, help me. O oh Lord, do not delay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon. I am Brother Matthew. I am a Franciscan Capuchin, and uh, I came with a pilgrim group from England. And, and uh, it's a great privilege for me and everyone gathered here to experience the intercession of uh, Our Lady and to pray here as a, com as a community of Christians. And uh, I can see that there are people from around, from around the world, and we are all united, united in our faith, united in Christ. And as we seek the intercession of Our Lady, let's also be reminded of what Our Lady said at the wedding of Cana, follow what he says, follow what her son Jesus has told us. And as Christians, we are all trying to follow what Jesus has taught us. As Christians, we are all good people and we are trying hard to make progress in our spiritual life. Yet, there can be shortcomings and failures in, in, the, in, the, in, in our way towards God, to a way towards perfection. So let us acknowledge our shortcomings and failures and seek the pardon and mercy of God. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and here my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. At the beginning of the month, at the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judea, in the fifth month of the fourth year, the prophet Hananiah, son of Azar, a Jebite, spoke as follows to Jeremiah in the temple of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people. The Lord, God of Israel, says this, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. In two years' time, I will bring back the vessels of the temple of the Lord, which Nadu Besikir, king of Babylon, carried off from this place and took to Babylon. I will also bring back Jekon, son of Chekokim, king of Judea, and all the exiles of Judea who have gone to Babylon. It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, I am going to break the yoke of the king of Babylon. The prophet Jeremiah then replied to the prophet Haniah in front of the priests and all of the people there in the temple of the Lord. I hope so, the prophet Jeremiah said. May the Lord do so. May he fulfill the words that you prophesied and bring the vessels to the temple of the Lord and all the exiles back to this place from Babylon. Listen carefully. However, to this word I am going to say for you and for all the people to hear, from remote times, the prophets who preceded you and me prophesied war, famine and plague from many countries and for great kingdoms, but the prophet who prophesies peace can be recognized as the one truly sent from the Lord when the world comes true. The prophet Haniah then took the yoke of the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it. In front of the, all the people, Haniah then said, the Lord says this, this is how... Two years hence, 
I will break the yoke of Nezubedukia, king of Babylon, and take it away from all the necks of all the nations. At this, the prophet Jeremiah went away. After, the prophet Hananiah then broke the yoke, which he had taken off from the neck of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord says this, addressed to Jeremiah, go to Hananiah and tell him this. The Lord says this, you can break wooden yokes, right? I will make them iron yokes instead. For the Lord of hosts, the king of Israel says this, an iron yoke is what I will now lay on the necks of all the nations to subject them to Nadupasikir, king of Babylon. They will be subject to him, and I will, and I have even given him to the wild animals. The prophet Jeremiah said to the prophet Hananiah, "Listen carefully, Hananiah. The Lord has not sent you, and thanks to you, this people are now relying on what is false. Hence, the Lord says this: I am going to throw you off the face of the earth." You are going to die this year, since you have preached since you have preached apostrophe from the Lord. The prophet Hananiah died the same year in the seventh month. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Lord, teach me your statutes. Lord, teach me your statutes. Keep me from the way of error and teach me your law. Do not take away the word of truth from my mouth, for I trust in your decrees. Lord, teach me your statutes. Let your faithfulness turn to me, those who know your will. Let let my heart be blameless in your statutes, lest I will be shamed. Lord, teach me your statutes. Through though the wicked lie in wait to destroy me, yet I ponder on your will. I have not turned away from your decrees. You you yourself have taught me. Lord, teach me your statutes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one can come to the Father except through me. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus received the news of John the Baptist that he withdrew by boat to a lonely place where they could be by themselves but the people heard of this and leaving the towns went after him on foot so as he stepped ashore he saw a large crowd and he took pity on them and healed their sick when evening came the disciples went to him and said this is a lonely place and the time has slipped by so send the people away and they can go to the villages to buy themselves some food jesus replied there is no need for them to go give them something to eat yourselves but they answered all we have with us is five loaves and two fish bring them here to me he said he gave orders that the people were to sit down on the grass then he took the five loaves and two and the two fish raised his eyes to heaven and said the blessings and breaking the loaves he handed them to his disciples who gave them to the crowd they all ate as much as they wanted and they collected the scraps remaining 12 baskets full those who ate numbered about 5000 men to say nothing of women and children the gospel of the lord Dear brothers and sisters the multiplication of the bread is an, a miracle that is uh, recorded in all the four gospels of the bible and the sunday before last we heard john's account of the miracle and today we are we heard the we heard matthew's account of the miracle 
Now, in the, in the, the opening sentence we, we heard is that when Jesus received the news of John the Baptist's death, he withdrew by boat to a lonely place. And uh, it marks us, jo uh, Jesus withdrew a lonely place when the disciples returned after their missionary trip. They were so tired and they did not have even the time even to eat. So Jesus wanted the disciples and for himself to have some rest. And for that, he, they returned to a lonely place. According to Matthew, Jesus wanted to grieve or to bereave the death of John the Baptist. But then when he went to a lonely place, people are there. People have the real, th the spiritual thirst, spiritual thirst to know more about the divine realities Jesus is uh, disclosing. And people also have their physical needs. They want to be healed of their sicknesses. And they are also seeking some sort of comfort uh, from Jesus. But however, Jesus, forgetting his own need for rest or comfort or even uh, for grief, he is there to teach them. He is he's setting himself up for teaching them. And when Jesus realizes that they, these people are hungry, he himself asks the disciples to feed them. And they are surprised how to feed them, you know, because they have very, very little resource. They have just five loaves and two fish. And then the miracle, the multiplication of the bread happens. So what, and then John, you know, John further says about Jesus himself being the bread of life, the bread that came down from heaven, the life-giving bread. You know, he is in a way indicating the kind of death Jesus was to die on the cross the supreme sacrifice of, the, of Jesus. He, his own body was broken and he, left, he shed even the last drop of his blood on the cross. And that is what we reenact the, at the Eucharist. At every Eucharistic celebration, we are reminded of the supreme sacrifice of Jesus and his glorious resurrection through which we are all redeemed. So here we find Jesus who is concerned about the whole person. He's concerned about their spiritual needs. He's concerned about their physical needs. And he's also uh, ready to make any sacrifice for the people who are in need. So it's a great privilege for us to experience the presence of the Lord in the Eucharist. And especially as we receive the bread and wine or the holy bread and wine, and, I mean, you, we receive Jesus himself under the symbols of bread and wine. It's a great privilege for us also uh, to be reminded of the supreme sacrifice of Jesus. And it's also an invitation for us to be people who are, cons are able to console others, to be able to feed others, to be able to guide others spiritually and in every way possible. May God bless us and may Je uh, Our Lady intercede for us. Now it's time for the offertory.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. May we come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For the divine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. May humble spirit and contrite heart may be accepted by your Lord. And may your sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Praying, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For I could have. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make your first an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up, Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises are nothing to your greatness, but profitless, salvation, profitless for salvation through Christ. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founder of all holiness. Make you holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit, so that they may be spirit upon us like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and ended willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given out for you. In a similar way, when supper was entered, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit.
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise your glory and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom be done. Thy kingdom be done. Honor of the cities in heaven. Give us this day your daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. And deliver us from the evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. No one forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who is at your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God. Take away sins of the world and our sins. Mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and our sins. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those who renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Now we have the blessing of the holy articles, which will be done in Portuguese. Faço agora a benção dos objetos religiosos. I will bless now the religious objects. Bendito sejais, Senhor, fonte e origem de todas as bênçãos, que sempre promoveis a piedade sincera dos vossos fiéis, por intercessão da bem-aventurada Virgem Maria e dos santos Francisco e Jacinta Marto, Assiste benignamente os vossos servos e fazei que, levando consigo estes símbolos de fé e piedade, sobre os quais invocamos a vossa bênção, se vão transformando a imagem dos vo do vosso Filho, e ele que vive e reina pelos séculos dos séculos. So it's a great privilege for us to be here and seek the intercession of Our Lady and pray together and offer the Holy Mass. It's a great privilege for me. So I thank everyone gathered here and especially the uh, the, the staff and uh, people who are looking at the shrine. And as we are all pilgrims on the way towards perfection and on the way towards the meeting God, let's continue to experience the intercession of Our Lady and the constant protection and love and care of God himself. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. <laughs>